uh, good morning everyone um, thanks for uh, cpfd for giving me the opportunity to give a talk today uh, i will be mainly talking about uh, how we are using uh, the barakoda tool uh, for optimizing fcc riser section and uh, whether it's fcc uh, riser itself or the rtd one um, i mean before i uh, go with my uh, talk um, there was a funny thing about the picking the title and uh, thinking about what i should be discussing today and i was discussing with sam also that okay should i show something uh, with bada gora could model that mm, doesn't look like a might be a right choice to do that but thinking of this a100 i think now we can model lot many things probably the cat cooler which we are facing us little bit issues uh, because of the complexities of lot of internals in the in the model probably we can model with that one um, but uh, yeah uh, before i proceed i like to acknowledge uh, my colleague scott uh, which is who is here uh, who helped me in putting together this presentation uh, he is uh, part of our fcc technology team managing the fcc r&d group and uh, let's start uh, with the talk he is uh, um some of the things which i will be discussing i will be briefly going through the um, who we are in a technique of uh, a very brief introduction what tools we are used to uh, in our fcc arena uh, i will be giving three case studies two on the revamp and uh, one is on the uh, design optimization um okay technique uh, basically uh, I mean, we license more than 80 different uh, process technologies in more than 10 different applications whether it's refining pet cam cir circular economy sustainable fuels and many different applications we have almost like a, a more than 80 different uh, process technologies and uh, i work basically in the uh, fluid catalytic uh, cracking section and uh, in fluidized bed applications we have a uh, more than 8 different uh, applications fcc acrylo uh, the acrylo natrile the fischer trop solutions so and many other fluidized bed uh, processes we design uh, and license um in terms of the analytical tools which we use for fcc in particular for gas solid uh, we use barakuda um for uh, gas gas and gas liquid we use uh, fluent here are some of the examples i'm showing over here uh we have started using a uh, fluent uh, vof dpm hybrid model to uh, evaluate how the uh, the feed atomization and the droplet formation uh, happens and so that we can study how we can further um, optimize our feed injection technology here i'm showing an example of uh, the slurry wall uh, flow path and the the erosion pattern here i'm showing an example over here for barakoda use of the uh, the regenerator combustion modeling section and we also use fea uh, for the stress analysis deformation due to weight vibrations we also use machine learning and uh, uh, finally the yield estimation model uh, for estimating the uh, the yield structure of the uh, different feeds we process in the fcc so just just give a, a very um, brief overview of what type of tools we use and now i will go proceed with my case study the first case study is uh, on a, a riser revamp which we did um, several years back now uh, it's already been running for last 5 years now and um, i will i will be discussing what challenges we faced during uh, during that uh, modifications and how we use cfd to uh, help it it is a it was a side by side fccu uh, it has an external riser look like this one as an original structure and um, their turn around objective was to um, um, process heavier feedstock and achieve higher conversion so we um, proposed to have a new feed r feed injection technology over there we also proposed to have a, a bigger riser but there was a unit constraints the tying points at the top and at the bottom was fixed we cannot change that so because of that we have to end up having a kinked section so at first point we thought okay is it going to affect our yields is it going to affect the performance how the flow is going to look like at the top so to see whether it will work we thought okay let's model it and see whether to remove all the uncertainties to see whether it works or doesn't work whether it will erode 
or it will impact the yields. Let's study it. And um, here the modeling domain looks like. So we model all the way from the slide wall uh, up to the riser section, having all the injection points for the feed, for the slurry backwash. The kink section was included in that. There was a, a vent from the stripper which comes over there at the top of the riser. We model that, and then the crossover duct section to see whether how the flow goes out of the riser section into the uh, a separator section where the gas and solids are separating or whether it will because of our modification it will make any any effect on the performance of of the downstream section so different different configuration we modeled the first one case one is the original one and case four is the the final one in case one uh, it's a uh, it's a, a same diameter single straight riser the other one was also having a kinked section the vent over here it was relocated to a, a lower elevation at the center line and all we are seeing over here is that uh, with the final configuration the the gas velocities at the uh, i mean at the top of the uh, the at the turn that reduced uh, with the optimization the pillow top you can see over here it was a little bigger over there and uh, the catalyst reflux was a lot lower so we optimize the design using the the help of the CFD with the Barracuda tool, uh, and we'll look at the erosion sections also. Um, we didn't find any erosion in the kinked section basically, but we do find some erosion at the top of the uh, top of the turn. So the modifications which we were doing in terms of the pillow top and in terms of relocating the the vent line going um, uh, opposite of the uh, uh, the crossover so that help us to see whether how we can reduce that that type of uh, erosion patterns over there so with the help of cfd yes we um, optimize the design uh, we evaluated the impact of the the kinked section in the riser and finally we um, designed the the all the modifications for them the unit is running for last more than five years now with no issues um, they we improve we got our test run done it was successful now let's move to the second case study um, it was a it was on a rtd uh, new rtd we introduced uh, in the vessel it was a uh, stacked fcc unit with a side stripper here is the unit looks like uh, unit was end of the life basically we need to replace the the reactor section and the the stripper section so uh, the client come to us that okay it's a time to improve our technologies also what what's new thing we can offer and we offered them the the, the packing over there but they want to add their own um, rtd section over there the so client has an rtd which has been used in another one of their other unit so they want to introduce that over here but again the constraint was this unit was almost like uh, 18000 barrels pretty small the reactor was probably, I believe it was almost like 10 foot, not very big. So the RTD which is looking over here, which is a, a inner section, there was an outer section also. But for us in, to put that outer section in this vessel was not possible. So the reactor wall it's, itself is kind of an RTD. And the cyclone which we're putting over here, it is kind of putting the cyclone in the RTD, not in the vessel. So at first we'll look, we'll look at it and say, okay, is it gonna work? Now, we have a second stage separation inside the first stage separation. So we'll, the only way to check is that, okay, let's model it. We know the baseline, this RTD works in the other unit. It is giving us very good separation, but whether it is gonna work if we bring the second stage cyclone in the first stage or not. So we modeled it, um, yes, uh, some of the highlights, the, uh, we modeled it. Here's the domain, uh, model do modeling domain looks like. Uh, the whole, the riser section, the feed injection over here, we didn't model the whole, uh, the complete riser, but we took it in the, in the center, uh, considering a uniform distribution of the, the feed over here, the riser, the crossover section, the RTD section over here. Uh, the cyclone was also modeled in um, in this configuration. So it has the cyclone wall. 
so everything is meshed properly so that it will cover the flow in the vessel and in the cyclone now the challenge is that okay cyclone doesn't have a uh, we cannot model the the the, the dip like wall over here so what what we did is that we cut a section over here we put a two boundaries whatever goes out of the dip leg is going to go come out of this one so there's no reverse flow so we modeling the whole section basically now so riser section uh, the bed over here the whole vessel plus the flow in the cyclone to see whether how the flow pattern is going to affect the performance of the cyclone also and uh, uh, similarly for we model for this case but there is another example i have which we in where we have modeled the 46 foot reactor with the rtd with the stripper section with 21 no sorry 22 cyclones uh, in that including the flow in the cyclones but yeah let's look at this one so we modeled it uh, there were two challenges we were having at that point first uh, how the rtd will work is going to improve the uh, improve the performance the current unit was not having any fines in that because they were losing all the fines so if we improve it our psd is going to change so if we improve the psd imp uh, improve the catalyst losses and fines retention so my psd will change so what will be my new psd and how is going to impact the performance post turn around so we looked at three different psds uh all the way from uh, uh the current one which is zero uh, uh i mean no uh, zero to 40 micron particles then 5% which is a conventional one and then up to all the way up to 12% uh to see what the effect of the rtd on the overall performance of the unit is going to be so here uh, as such the concept does work pretty good uh in terms of the um the flow paths which we were expecting in terms of the looking at what the uh, the erosion areas is going to be what the um rtd efficiency is going to be the way it's supposed to work is that the uh, the gas and catalyst is going to flow up it will turn down and there is a a window across the wall and which is going to give a swirl flow which would help and it swirls around the vessel wall and some of the catalyst is going to uh, i mean going uh, uh, to go at the end of the uh, rtd where there is a baffle and it's going to sweep down the um, down the vessel wall and gas is going to flow up and it enters the cyclone in terms of uh, overall we didn't find any um, any major concerns but we do identified some of the areas which we can improve the reactor cone section was the one uh with a coarser psd it was showing uh a defluidized sections so we changed the angle of that we also add uh, a a a a baffle a ridge around the uh around the wall to improve the separation efficiency which was there in the original one uh but considering it was a retrofit and a smaller vessel earlier we uh, we didn't put that in uh, to see whether uh, whether it will perform without the baffle we also added some of the uh baffles at the exit of the it's not showing over here but exit of the uh, the window the rtd the inner vessel uh, to see how it will perform here i'm showing some of the results for the coarser and the fine psd with the coarser psd it was almost giving 95% efficiency uh, based upon the loading to the cyclone and uh, with the uh, with with the finer psd it was giving a uh, less i mean uh, close to 90% uh, but the overall efficiency which was measured with the with the cyclone which is already included in as well as we we did our uh, internal calculations to see what the entrainment is going to be based for the cyclone based on the cyclone loading and the psd it looks like uh, in both the cases uh, even if you lose uh, uh, the loading is going to be higher but the psd is now uh we are losing more coarser particles so it it will still overall efficiency is still going to be um going to be the similar whether it's a finer or the psd one or the or the coarser one so we did this evaluation looked at different different scenarios here i am showing the um 
the the view with the uh, with the gas velocity is going up uh, more than 15 feet per second to see which how the the, the flow pattern looks like we we all will always also look at the vectors to see whether the whether how the gas is flowing and entering the cyclone here you can see the ribbon inside the cyclone also the flow in the cyclone also how it's uh, it how it's behaving And after uh, adding the, uh, the 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 ridge, the 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 helix ridge over here, you can see that the comparing with the uh, the initial one versus the final one. Uh, after the um, the hel the helix ridge, there is a, the particles which are living up. They are, that has reduced the loading to the cyclone has reduced, which helps to improve the sep separation efficiency. Uh, overall. Um, we design. I mean, we we had initial design. CFD helped us to imp improve certain features, uh, bring more confidence in terms of how it's going to perform. Yes, uh, the unit is going to be. This unit is going to be installed in 2024. So we'll see whether how it behaves in 2024. But we have a baseline of the original RTD, which is working in one of the North America uh, refinery for last 15 years the efficiencies are pretty good so it is a modified version of that rtd and probably in 2024 we will invite the client to come and talk about that whether how it works uh, so next case study is on the uh, mushroom rtd design optimization and i will go through it to see whether how we approach that problem uh, the this is how the mushroom art, uh, mushroom looks like. Uh, basically, at the top of the lift line, uh, top of the riser section, or uh, a lift line uh, in the FCC unit, we use this for the uh, for the gas and catalyst distribution. Uh, this in this reactor, I will briefly go through it. This is a reactor section with a it's a, a PMCC reactor uh, reactor section where we have a riser cracking as well as there is a bed over here and the gas riser vapors it comes out of the it comes out of the mushroom uh, distributor and it further goes cracking in the bed to imp, uh, to boost the propylene yields from the from the naphtha so this is the riser section the reactor the bed over here the gas comes out the the the, the spent catalyst the coked catalyst it it comes it will flow down pass through this the stripper section the standpipe here is the first stage uh, regenerator there is a lift line transfer line from the first stage to the second stage. So the first stage operates in a partial burn, and the catalyst is uh, the partially uh, regenerated catalyst will go to the second stage. Again, at the top of the lift line, there is a mushroom distributor over here. The mushroom distributor has a holes at the top. The gas and catalyst, which comes out of this, uh, the the slots basically it goes part of the gas uh, goes through the mushroom holes and part comes out on the side. So we used in both the the re regenerator section as well as the in the reactor section. Um, I mean, as such, this mushroom is in 56 regenerators, almost eight reactors. It's performing well, uh, but we, as a part of our ongoing um, R and D and development, further development, we always look how we can improve our features and. Um, we did a survey uh, a few years back. We looked at okay how these units are performing. We collected the data from the uh, eleven uh, commercial FCC regenerators, the second stage ones, and looked at okay how, how what does the afterburn shows. It it is almost like a five to twenty five degrees afterburn. We are we have seen in the units uh, in terms of the radial distribution. The temperature looks pretty good. Uh, there is no temperature variation along the different uh, sides, so it is kind of uniform, uh, but there is some afterburn which we still see, so we will say okay, there is some room to improve. We modeled it, this is a model basically by CPFT for one of our unit. It shows that uh, the gas which is coming out of the uh, mushroom, it, it kind of sweeps along the wall and mainly concentrated in the center. This is the velocity profile and this is the temperature profile. And our first thing was that, okay, is it true or is, 
is it not capturing the whole effect? So uh, we have a technique as an alliance with IFP and uh, Accents and Total is a part of that. IFP did the test, um, uh, the cold flow test and here are some of the results. Uh, one of the results, the helium uh, tracer results which shows that yes, the concentration is high in the center. Um, so yes, we look at the, this, this as an opportunity to further look at what we can do to even go one step further and reduce that afterburn for the regenerator case and for the reactor case how we can help distribute the riser gases more evenly in the, in the catalyst bed to further boost the propylene yield. And uh, we, we collected uh, within the team we collected a lot of ideas what we can do, change of the modify the existing one, change coming to a totally new uh, RTD design. Uh, then we looked at, collected all the ideas, look, uh, and then we screened them based upon the set parameters, I mean looking at the process considerations, looking at whether it will fit, mechanical reliability, fabrication, all the complexities it can involve. And finally then we said okay, let's model them further to see whether which one makes sense or doesn't make sense. So in terms of the modeling also, we're not only looking at the pictures, I would say animations. We set some criteria that how we should determine which one is better than the other one. We look at the gas flow uniformity, uh, whether it get improved with the new changes, the standard deviation of the axial gas velocity, which determines basically if the standard deviation is lower, it shows that there will be less gas uh, streaming and more mixing is happening. We also reduce the, the kinetics to understand why, how the bed conversion uh, behave, whether it will improve or it will go in a different direction. We set the, those criteria and then evaluated all the designs. Um, here I am showing, okay, we, we used a, a commercial scale FCC uh, unit to start with. We model that, we know how, how that unit perform. We use that as a basis and then start changing the RTDs. I'm only showing four over here, but start changing the RTDs to see whether how it will behave based upon the baseline. So all the comparison was done from the baseline. We have a set baseline, we know how the unit is performing and that, that was used as a baseline because we don't have a, a cold flow test for that. So it is important to see, to look at the relative change and finally, we come up with a new design uh, which looks like a branches, having a branches on the mushroom. Um, and over here, I'm showing two pictures over here without arms and with arms and with arms. You only, this is only the profile with the, the catalyst, uh, the, the particles coming out of the riser, which looks a lot more distributed over here. We look at the gas flow uniformity, which looks like the, it's, it's, uh, it's improved by, by 2x. In terms of the fractional bed conversion, it improved by almost 60%. And uh, so this looks like, okay, yes, we are uh, with the uh, addition of the arms, it was helping gas and catalyst distribute in the bed. So we have two versions of this, this design, one by Technip and one by IFP. And Technip is the winner, right? <laughs> <laughs> we are, we're going to test both. Uh, we are planning to test both. Uh, but right now we are kind of ready to see whether to implement it uh, in the next next revamp. Um, so the summary for uh, this case study, uh, we took a proper approach to optimize the design, we reviewed the existing design, we look at the limitations, we look at what can be improved, screen the new ideas, set the parameters, how, how we can um, in looking at all the aspects of pro on a process side, on a, on a mechanical reliability side, and uh, we also have a, uh, uh, we filed the patent, it has already been awarded, and we're ready to put that in a unit. Uh, on an overall summary, uh, yes, uh, we are using uh, Barracuda as well as all other uh, CFD tools to help us, uh, not just to uh, come up with the new designs, but sometimes also to make be sure that what we are designing is correct or not. Uh, even if 
even if two units are similar, sometimes they behave very different. And uh, it's always good to check whether, okay, uh, to bring more confidence in what you are proposing or during the troubleshooting also to see whether how the unit is behaving. So we're using this tool heavily. Thank you.